What's going on, you guys? Links Forte here to bring you my season three draft analysis of the APA. Um, if you guys didn't watch the live stream yesterday on Dan's our Twitch channel, our A Drive's Twitch channel, you will see my picks for the first time. And uh, this is where I just break everything down, kind of go through the mindset. Um, I had a couple people helping me out. Big shout out to Biddle and uh, Moonlight Swami. Like they helped me through the entire draft process, just kind of helping me. Um, make decisions for the most part um, why I should take whatever and you know they they didn't just say no to my ideas <laughs> because I'm not the best drafter I, I kind of try to let my battling back me up and then my drafting can be a lot better but Biddle and Swami definitely helped me out with um, this whole thing but um, let me just tell you guys, everyone who is in this APA league, um, and then they're, all their channels and Twitters will be in the description as well, so you can go check them out, their draft analysis, and then subscribe to their channels for uh, all the battles. So first up, we have General Tar Heel, coach of the Charlotte Char, Char uh, Charlotte Charizards. I can't <laughs> yeah, this is why people hate alliteration names. But anyway. Uh, General Tar Heel, coach of the Charlotte Charizards. Next up, we have Mydicus, coach, uh, coach of the Boston Beedrills. We have the defending champion, uh, Jacob, as always, coach of the Green Bay Pikachus. Uh, Kyle A., coach of the Miami Dom fans. There's also uh, Panther, coach of the Carolina Clefables. And then you have A Drive, coach of the St. Louis Rampardos. You have uh, Crimson Seabag, coach of the Detroit Steel Wings. <clears throat> you have uh, Elite Four Dan, if I'm not mistaken, is what he goes by. On on this page, it has Dan K. Meme, so I'm not sure what he goes by. But uh, coach of the Chelsea Cloisters. And then there is uh, Jeremiah, coach of the Vegas Golden Bisharps. Mewtwo Fan Nate and his New York Noibats. And then there's uh, Kurt the Buzzwall. Uh, and the Adelaide Absols. Sleeping Knight 77, aka Kyle, of the, and coach of the Montreal Two Canadiens. And then you have Silver Smasher, coach of the Floridian Typhlosions. Phantom Base, coach of the New York Cosmogs. And last but not least, Deathly I Am, coach of the Seattle Drizzlers. So, those are all the teams. Um, this league if i'm not mistaken it will, this league is split up into four divisions we play 12 games um we only play everyone in our divisions once which is a little weird to me as to why it's even split up in divisions but whatever um basically it's going to come down to just having a good record um i think it's top two in each division uh go on to the playoffs let me pull up the rules tab yeah, I know, I know I'm just talking about, like, basically the gist of everything. But, um, like I said, if, if people didn't see the live stream yesterday or, you know, if I'm the first draft um, analysis video that they're watching, I just want everybody to understand the rules. So, yeah, top two teams in each division advance to the playoffs. Um, it, it is what it is. Like, if you have a stacked division, it kind of sucks because you only play each person once. Um, honestly, if you're going to do divisions... Just make sure everybody plays twice, but a lot of people, especially me, like hate playing the same person more than once, at least in the regular season. But yeah, whatever. I'm just here to play. I'm here to try and win and have fun in the process. Um, so yeah, we ended up drafting like we finished the draft in like three days, but we ended up drafting like a couple weeks ago. And then, you know, like I said, as I've said like 10 times, uh, A Drive had the live stream yesterday. And now we're all set to go. First battles will go up on the seventh. I'll double check about that. I think it's on. I think it, the battles go up on Sundays. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna break down my team now because I have been talking randomness for four and a half minutes. So I had the 13th pick, or sorry, the 15th pick overall. So just close to a wheel pick, but not quite a wheel pick. And honestly, I had no idea what it was I wanted to draft. Um, as I'm going through everything, I'm like, I want to try something different, but at the same time, I want to try something good. Um, with the 15th pick, you kind of never know what you're going to get. 
So you have to make a decision with what's going to be there. And at first I was like, you know, I, I want to try Landers because I've never tried Landers in a draft. And since that's like the definition of OU, I figured, you know, it would be a fun Pokemon to use in draft. Unfortunately, I think Tar Heel grabbed it at like the 12th pick. So a couple picks before it got to me. Which kind of left me scrambling. It's like, I have no idea what I want. So that's when I went to Biddle and I was like, dude, I have no idea what I want. Um, this is what's been taken. Um, I, I'm pretty much game for anything and then we could try and build around that. So he suggested that I go with Victini. And which is a cool Pokemon. Uh, base 100 all the way around. I've never used Victini, like not even in the competitive, like on the ladder or normal Wi-Fi battles, especially not in leagues. So this is going to be a first for me, um, but I do like that. Victini has a good enough move pool uh, to where it can be physical or special, primarily physical, obviously. But I can, if I choose to go like special, I can run like Thunderbolt, Glaciate, Flamethrower, and pivot out with U turn. Um, v Create is obviously its signature move. Um, Bolt Strike, I think, is the one that it goes, or it's either Bolt Strike or Fusion Bolt. I can't remember which one is the preferred electric physical move, but I actually like Victini. Um, Fire types are a little iffy for me because I'm a person who doesn't like to carry uh, hazard removal, at least going into the battles, because I feel like that limits my move sets, it, lim it limits my team building. But I kind of figure, you know, if we're going to go with Victini, I have to at least down the road start thinking about, oh, hazard removal, hazard removal, hazard removal, and I need more than one. So if I do bring a Pokemon that has hazards, that I'm not limited. Um, by, I'm not limited by forcing that one Pokemon to remove hazards, whereas I have maybe two, three other options. I don't know. But that was one of my things, or one of my thought processes going in. Um, so next up, I wasn't sure to pair with it. Like basically, I had a back-to-back a -back pick. It was only one other person picking after me, and that was Panther. So he had back-to-back -back picks, and then it was back to me. Um, again, never used Victini, so I wasn't sure what to pair it with. So again, this was a Biddle pick, and so he suggested that I go with Mega Venusaur, which is, you know, a really cool Pokemon. I've used it in the past. Um, I didn't finish the league for personal reasons for the major Pokemon league. I had it then, but like I said, personal reasons, I didn't get to finish the league. Um, but Mega Venusaur is a Pokemon that I've, I've gone up against many times, like, uh, a guy I used to know, uh, he doesn't play Pokemon anymore, but this this was like his mascot, and he claimed Mega Venusaur was like the greatest Pokemon of all. And I think it's a fun Mega. It can be, it's primarily like a wall, but it can be um, a fully offensive set, especially offensive set. I, there is a physical set that I want to try out. I'm not going to mention it here because if I want to make sure I get the chance to use it against one of my opponents. Um... But yeah, it's pretty well-rounded. It gets Sleep Powder, Leech Seed, um, obvious poison moves. And then with Thick Fat, it can take on the Fire types and the Ice types decently well, not the best. Like it's more of a neutral hit than it is like a super effective hit because of Thick Fat. So it's an interesting uh, pairing with Victini. So at this point, you know, I have my ground types covered. Um, I have Victini's ground weaknesses covered. Venusaur's psychic weakness is covered in a sense. And now I have to try and our Victini's water weakness is covered as well. But now I have to try and pair it up. So it's like, hey, let's go ahead and finish our fire water grass core. So with this, we had three Pokemon in mind. We had uh in order, it was Rotom Wash, Milotic, and then Suicune. Now I'm not the biggest fan of Suicune just because it's, it just sits there, does nothing. Um, like, even when people I've seen who have been very creative um, competitively, like with their sets and things, they've always run just like toxic stalling set in a sense with Suicune. Some may bring like an AV set once in a while, but it's usually the same set and I hate that. Like to me, Suicune is almost like a one trick. But if the other two were taken, then that was gonna be the choice. So I think it was a couple picks after um, I took Mega Venusaur, Rotom Washes off the board, and then maybe on the comeback in the next round, Suicune was taken. Basically, picks one and two were taken, and so I started to get nervous that Melodic would get taken as well because there's not much 
else, but we were able to come back around and pick up Milotic. Another Pokemon I had when I was in a major Pokemon League last season. Um, it's a Pokemon that I actually really love. Um, I don't use it too often in competitive League, competitive Wi-Fi battles or anything like that. But it's a fun Pokemon that, you know, when I look at it, it's like I have many options. Um, primarily physically defensive, but I can make it somewhat specially. I can make it very specially defensive if you look at, at its special defense stat, 125, HP at 95. And I just have to avoid electric and grass types, but we can make things work around that. Um, very, a pretty decent special attack stat, um, 100. Has Ice Beam... <laughs> um, sorry, Ice Beam Scald, Surf, um, what else does it get? It, I don't think it really gets anything to cover up its, to cover up its, uh, electric weakness, actually, because there's not, because you can only have the ground weakness, I mean, ignore me right now, <laughs> but yeah, so, um, Milotic is a fun Pokemon, um, there's a coil set that somebody was showing me, and I'm like, I don't know how well that will work. But it might be interesting to try it maybe along that later on down the road or something. But we'll see if it comes to that. Now, uh, my for my fourth pick, is, you know, I finished my four fire, water, grass core. I'm I'm jumbling my words. So yeah, I finished my fire, water, grass core. So we're just kind of looking at everything and saying, okay, what it is, what is it that we need here? Um, and I don't remember what the conversation was. I think it was more of, at this point, I need to kind of get hazard removal. I think that was one of the things that was said. Hazard removal, and then maybe priority was maybe another one. So we started looking at our options, and um, I wasn't really sure about anything. And again, <laughs> shout out to Biddle, because uh, he recommended Scizor. Now, I've used Scizor in a league in the past. But this was before I, you know, became comfortable with, um, this is before I became comfortable with changing EVs up, doing different movesets, not, you know, being so standard Smogon set in Draft League and getting into different leagues. So now I can actually, I probably can use Scizor to his fullest potential as far as Draft League because he is really good physically defensive. Um, the only issue is that quad weakness to fire. And I, I guess you could say we kind of have it patched. I mean, Melodic and Victini take on fire. I don't know. Maybe maybe something is there. But the biggest thing was getting a defogger. But, you know, stab, bullet punch, technician, not, you know, still very nice to have as well. So that was um, just something. I, I guess it wasn't like a huge need but it was something like i wanted to make sure i had hazard removal as soon as possible i didn't want to be stuck with something in the low tier that i probably did not want to use or that i couldn't I, I couldn't do enough with it to you know justify it or anything like that so next up um i still wanted to stick you know maybe get another hazard remover or just i guess start a fairy dragon steel core and a bunch of different things were coming into play. Um, if I was going to get a fairy, I wanted I wanted to make sure I got a fairy that I wanted. I didn't want to be stuck with a fairy. Now, normally, I would love to go for Sylveon, but Sylveon was tier 1, and I'm not picking Sylveon tier 1 no matter how much I love it. Plus, I don't think I was actually able to pick it tier 1. Yeah, because Scizor is my other tier 1. I would have been left with like 40 points, so yes. Um... It wasn't possible for me to take another tier one, so, but I wouldn't have gone for it anywhere. So I ended up um, going Florges, which I, I really want to use Florges now because in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Florges gets defog. So it gives me another hazard remover, and I don't have to rely on Scizor to be my hazard remover. If I want to bring like a choice band Scizor set, I can, I'm free to do so. If I want to be bring uh, SD plus three attacks, I'm free to do so. Um, it also gives me a very specially defensive wall. Um, I, I I can take various different hits. So it's like my poison weakness, uh, or my poison kind of weakness is obviously patched up here. Um, or Scizor takes that. 
Um, it's Steel Weaknesses, or takes that, Victini takes it, Melodic takes it. And uh, that's it wasn't really much thought process going into this pick, other than I wanted a fairy, I wanted Forages, and I got Defog for a second Pokemon. Now this next Pokemon, um, I knew I needed to be faster. Like right here, I was like, I gotta get faster. Right now, my fastest Pokemon is a base 100, all that all across the board, uh, big team, and I'm not feeling that at all. So, speed was a definite fact factor in this next pick, and there were some other options. There's a lot of options, but two things: I wanted speed. And I wanted a dark type. I wanted to guarantee that I got a dark type. Like, there were several dark types I, I was looking at. Um, and I wasn't 100% sold on this. Ad In fact, I think something that I wanted was taken. Like, I think we were going to go a different typing for this pick. But something I wanted was taken. I just can't remember what it was. It might have been, like, a ground type that I wanted. I don't know. But um, I definitely needed to be faster. Because, as you, like I said, it's I have a base 100. I have a base 85 or 81. I have a base 70, I can't remember what Scizor is. And then the floor just there and Venusaur base 80. Like I, I'm not comfortable with the speeds right now. So um, I didn't want to be in a situation like I was in the P4G. So I ended up drafting Zorark. And I feel like Zorark can fit this team pretty well. When I have two U-Turners and uh, Victini and Scizor. And then you have, uh, I'm sorry. It gets knockoff, so I can pretend to be Scizor. It gets Flamethrower, so I can pretend to be Special Victini. I think it's a decent pick. Um, I think Scizor gets Brutal Swing, so if, uh, for whatever reason. I think that's the name of the move. It's, it's a new Dark-type move that came out in 7th Gen. So I think Scizor gets it, and I assume... Um, I assume Zorark gets it as well. Whatever. But I felt like it could pair well, or it could match up well in this team, and, you know, just provide some um mind games but like i said speed and dark typing were really the main reason for this pick and i couldn't get weavile which would have been nice because but i don't have i didn't have the points to do so so it is what it is but now i figure you know it was time oh i know what it was i wanted my dragon typing and i think it was kyle a drafted haxers somebody drafted haxers and i dm them told them I wanted that, but whatever. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and finish up my Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Um, I needed something with so Stealth Rocks. And uh, Coma O was either Tier 1 or Tier 2, so I couldn't go for that, obviously. But I needed something with Stealth Rocks. And I was actually looking at this because I think this will be a cool Pokemon to use this in general. Like, I've never used it because I don't dip into the lower tiers um, on Wi Fi battles or, or Showdown. I think this would be a cool Pokemon to use. So I picked up, and Biddle agreed that this is what we should get. Um, so we picked up um, Dredagon. So with Dredagon, I get a decent physical wall. Like I, if I throw a, you know how Garchomp sometimes runs like defensive, rough skin, Rocky Helm, I can kind of do the same here. I just don't have the speed. Um, I don't have the same kind of attack power. But I do have pretty decent stuff. I, like I said, I get rocks here. I get Mold Breaker, which is a, a really good ability to have in Draft League just because there's some Pokemon that like to be sturdy <laughs> and they are annoying. <laughs> but uh, other abilities get nullified as well. Um, yeah, Dredagon, I think, is a Pokemon that I may be able to have some fun with this season. We'll see how that all works out. Um, so with four pigs left, I have my fair or uh, fire fire water grass fair dragon steel cores. Now it's kind of just time to patch up any other issues. Um, as of now, all my Pokemon are on the ground and susceptible to like toxic spikes or well, except Scizor and Venusaur clean, clears it up. But I'm very uh, hazard weak when it comes to like rocks and spikes sort of toxic sparks so i wanted we we talked about it before about getting a flying type or just any pokemon off the ground which rotom wash would have been a great pokemon for which is the number one reason why we wanted that water type but um i knew we needed the flying typing and i still wanted to be faster 
I don't like having a base 100 and a base 105 as my two fastest Pokemon. I, honestly, I went at Crobat for this pick, and it ended up being taken in this exact round. So I'm looking for uh, more flying types to to help out. And this one, you know, I, I'm not. I, I don't dive into tears anymore because it's just I guess like that type of battling is boring to me. Like, somebody asked me the other day, when was the last time I had, like, a standard Wi-Fi battle? I was like, I don't know, man. It's It's been months, like, maybe before the P4G started. But, ended up going with Tornadus Eye, um, here. Like I said, off the ground, it gets defogged this gen, so now I have a third defogger. And, it's Prankster, so I can, I can taunt, I can, um... Do some weather things like hurricane or rain hurricanes shenanigans so i have some options here you know it, it allows me to team build very differently and i think it'll be i think tornadus i will fit very well on this team um another u-turner so another pokemon that fits right there with zorark uh, as long as like no hazards are on the field like spikes aren't on the field or something I can disguise that. I can just disguise Zorark as um, Tornadus Eye here. So, three picks left, and I wanted a ground type. There was only, I think, one that I definitely wanted. And that was. And, and uh, Biddle actually talked me into this one because I thought it was kind of cool. Um, that was Golurk. And Golurk actually got taken. I think it was like one or two picks before me like girl had just been taken I, I don't remember who took it but i was actually really upset because i was on my lunch break and i was running out trying to uh finish up some christmas shopping and like I, i'm walking around with my phone in my hand watching the chat and i'm just like oh my gosh it just got taken so i'm messaging Bill because i don't have i obviously don't have a doc in front of me so I'm asking him what ground types are left in, you know, tiers four and five. Because I think that's all I can get at this point. So he's listing them off. And he pulls one out. And I'm just like, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. But we'll figure it out. So we ended up taking Quagsire. And I, like I said, I don't know how I feel about Quagsire. But the unaware ability is pretty nice. The water absorbability as well. So no one can just spam like the Surf, Scald, Hydro Pump, or anything like that. But um, unaware ability is nice to keep. Just I guess to just stop setup Pokemon. Um, if need be, I can trap them and just I can trap them with Infestation and start uh, recovering and maybe Toxic stall them. Although that would not be something I would want to do. But if need be, I would actually do it. <laughs> I wouldn't do it for like an entire battle because I'm not that guy. Like, I'm, I, it's only like if somebody has something that I really cannot get rid of. For instance, Bill or uh, Sleeping Knight bringing a psychic type with, um, what was it? It was Calm Mind, Iron Defense, Recover, and Store Power or Moonlight and Store Power. I can sit there and trap that Pokemon in. I, I don't know. I guess even with the boost though, stored power would still work. I, I don't know how that works. But I would be able to toxic them. Um, I think guess even if they got the boost, that works that way. But yeah, I could trap something in if it wants to just like go set up crazy and it not be an issue. So if something wants to get the plus six, go ahead. As long as you don't have anything, I think stored power might just bypass my ability because I don't think it affects the ability. It just affects the um, whatever. You guys know. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was kind of like the reason behind Quagsire, and I found out later, because I was just like looking through to see what my, one of my last two picks, like, my very last pick, I already knew it. I said from round one, I want this Pokemon on my team, and it was a, it was a bottom tier pick, but, um, I, I knew what my last pick was, as long as, for whatever reason, no one took it, and I didn't think anybody would take it, but I was trying to decide what my second to my last pick was going to be. And so that's why I was looking through the tiers and I saw that Palosand was actually still available. And I was like, oh, we could have just had the same typing, still got a Stealth Rocker, which we didn't get here in um, Quagsire. But we could have had another Stealth Rocker, a Ground Ghost type, and it would have still been great. But it's fine. I think we can make Quagsire work because I do like the unaware ability. 
But this next pick, uh, Biddle actually pointed out that I did not have an electric type because I think I was going to go with something else. I don't remember what I was going to... Yeah, Biddle and Swami just were saying, I think, go with electric typing for whatever I was going to grab and don't remember what it was. But um, so we started looking and again, I, I needed some speed. <laughs> So it was actually kind of cool to uh, just go ahead and go for this electric typing. So we ended up taking Raichu, regular Raichu. Um, we didn't want Alola Raichu, Alolan Raichu. Like we all agreed on that because it gave you, I think three more weaknesses, dark, bug, and ghost. I think those are the three weakness psychic has. And then add on the ground typing, ground type weakness that it already had. So you added on three weaknesses I mean, you get a higher special attack, yeah, but you have an ability that is very situational. So, it's like, I didn't want to use a uh, situational ability. So, we all agreed that regular Raichu was the better option. Get a 110 speed, um, 90 attack and, uh, and special attack. So, I could, if I wanted to, I can run um, offense. I can run physically offensive or specially offensive. Maybe slap a choice band on it and use Volt Tackle. Um, Nasty plot or choice spec set. We have options here with Raichu. Uh, Volt Volt switching was a very good uh, something very that we very uh, very much needed. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't speak. Um, and then it gives us a Volt turn option as well. So that was the Raichu pick. And last but not least, if you guys watch my P4G battles. You will know that I fell in love with a certain Pokemon. It, it became easily my favorite Pokemon to pick up in Draft League. Uh, under the Radar, aka Kelly, uh, or sorry, Kelly, aka Under the Radar, has fallen in love with the Pokemon Linoon for its belly drumming e speed shenanigans. And in Ultra Sun and Moon, that Pokemon now has a way to deal with Steel types and Stomping Tantrum. Well, like Kelly, I have fallen in love with a very obscure Pokemon, I guess you could say. That Pokemon is Kecleon. Kecleon was so much fun to use for me in the P4G. Um, just, it's, it's very difficult to predict what set a person is going to bring each and every week. Kecleon has the move pool to bring a, a different set for 15 weeks or 12 weeks in this case. If it's needed, it gets priority in Fake Out, Shadow Sink, and Sucker Punch. I think it gets Faint as well, but you know, I, I would not use Faint here. But like I said, uh, Fake Out, Shadow Sink, Sucker Punch. It gets Stealth Rocks. Um, it has a really good Spadef. It's a very good um, Assault Vest user because it has so many um, offensive moves that it can use with its Protein ability, like Thunder Punch, Ice Punch. I think it gets all the elemental punches. Actually, it gets Journey Punch. Again, Sucker Punch for to get the Dark Typing, Knock Off as well, which which makes really good Pokemon um, when something tries to switch in. Like if you try to bring in the Ghost Type, predicting the Fake Out, no, you're getting hit with a Knock Off, and then I'll because I'm me, I may Shadow Sneak you, or I may run Sucker Punch and Shadow Sneak in the same set just to give me an option. I may run Knock Off with those two moves just to give me an option. So, um. I like Kecleon, man. Kecleon, and then because of what its spadef is, I can stick a whole lot of uh, EVs into its defense and its HP and have something ridiculously fat. Like I'm already preparing for my first um, week's battle, like my, actually I'm preparing for like my first two or three weeks and I'm looking at what hits Kecleon I can take from certain Pokemon. And it's just fun to like play around with the EVs and say, hey, or even with the movesets. And it's just so hard to predict. Um, and that it's just fun for me. <laughs> I love Gekleon in Draft League, man. Now, I will not go back to like Wi-Fi battles or regular Wi-Fi battles or like laddering and use Gekleon because that's it's it's not my thing. Like I, I'm I just play strictly OU usually. Or I do random battles, honestly, because I don't like team building anymore or team building for that kind of battle but anyway man though that is my team that is the season three south florida bulus um i'm ready man i'm ready i'm ready to have fun i'm ready to win 
I'm ready to get a championship. <laughs> Uh, not, that is it for me. Like I said, I think the first battle goes up on the 7th. I think it's a Sunday. I think, yeah, I think all battles are going up on the 7th. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure you go check out all the other coaches. Their draft analysis should be going up at some point. Go subscribe to everyone. And with that being said, I'm out of here. This is Link's Forte. Peace.